All right, so I will call the meeting to order. And Andy, you want to do a roll call? So, uh, Member Sue, I'm here. <laughs> Member Gary? Here. And Chair Rowden? Here. And um, Member Ford and Member Weitzel is absent. So we have the consent calendar. Um, it's just the usual items. I would like everyone to know we did things on time this year. Just like mark it, just check next to the calendar. All right. Does anyone have any questions or do I get can I get a good emotion to move the consent calendar? I'll move to approve the minutes. I second. Just the minutes or the whole calendar? Oh, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong agenda. Sorry about that. Um, the whole consent calendar, sorry. Okay. And um, um Gary, Gary, so I'm Gary also second for the whole cons consent. Yeah, I'll get for the whole yeah. So, member, I say yes, and member Gary? Yes. And Chair Rowden? Yes. And it looks like uh, member Weitzel is here now, too. Okay. Can he hear us? Member Weitzel? Um, you're muted. Sorry about that. There you go. All right. I think you I'm have any question on the, for being late. Okay. Do you have any question on the consent calendar? Would you like to cast your vote for uh, approving the consent calendar? Uh, approve it. Perfect. Okay, great. All right, so three is public comment. We don't have any public, unless do we have anything you want to say? Um, and so then does anyone have any announcements? No. Okay, then we have the reports. So uh, do we, we have our investment report? Road closure, Washington, Washington Street Road all traffic the next Washington Okay, hi everyone. Um can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Um Good seeing everyone. So this is the uh, uh, performance for uh, the second quarter for uh, the police and uh, fire pension pension fund. Um, similar to last few quarters or the last the previous quarters, uh, the structure of the um, the meeting or the uh, uh, the report is around um, current asset allocation. Uh, as of right now, uh, the uh, pension has under our management uh, or our advisory uh, $237,000 in cash. This is as, as of the end of uh, the second quarter, so June 30th. Um, $1.43 million in fixed income in bonds and $1.82 in stocks. So total uh, close to $3.5 million. That's at the end of the, the quarter. Um, the cash flow uh, since the beginning of the year 2021, um, the, uh, this is actually, this is uh, quarter to date. Um, so last quarter, uh, the value is $3.3 million. Uh, there was no withdrawals. Um, income uh, was $15,700. Uh, total return is $194,000. So, comes out to three and a half million dollars. Uh, the value since inception, so we started out with close to 11 million. The money withdrawn was close to 14 million. Um, total return over the period, six and a half million dollars. Um, as of the end of the quarter, 3.3 and a half million dollars. 
And we, we, uh, this is our performance or the portfolio performance year to date. Um, uh, this so far this year, um, the market has um, done very well. Year to date return for the first six months of the year is 12.42%. The last three years, 9.59. Uh, and uh, performance since inception is 8.1%, 8.13. .1 um, fixed income with the uh, interest rate going up uh, so far this year, prices on, on the bonds in the portfolio is slightly down. So the return is, is slightly down, down 0.8%. Uh, over the last three years, however, the bond portion of the portfolio returned 6.7%. And since inception, so over the last 11 and a half years, um, the bonds give about 5%. This is comparing to the benchmark of um, uh, 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 quite uh, lower. Um, on the equity, um, year to date, you can see it's up 26%. It's an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary year so far uh, for the Dodge and Cox fund. Uh, this is a value fund. Um, uh, if you compare it to against the benchmark of the Russell 1000 value, the fund has done very well uh, this year. Uh, comparing to the S&P, it's even better. The S&P has a lot of growth component in it. Um, this year, we had um, in the market, we had a, a, a value rotation. So value stock outperformed growth stocks. Um, but, you know, the Dodge and Cox fund outperform uh, pretty much everything um, in, uh, over the last six months. In the last three years, you can see the performance of uh, the Dodson Cox Fund is outperforming the value index, uh, slightly underperformed the S&P just because S&P has a lot of growth in it. And since inception, it's returned 12.2%. So when you average out, it's 8.13% since inception for a balanced portfolio. Uh, historically, that's a very high return for uh, a balanced portfolio. Any questions so far on the uh, performance or cash flow? This is the summary of the holding. So uh, right now there are, um, there are three main funds. In, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I, quick question. So do you, I mean, that's a pretty uh, significant return, the 26.1%. Are, are you anticipating that or am I getting ahead of myself that, that we're gonna continue on in that type of return? Well, we don't, con uh, we don't expect the same type of return for sure. Um, and, and I'm gonna go over that in, in our okay. economic outlook, but it doesn't mean that we're anticipating that, that the market or, or the fund will give back a lot of the gains. Um, uh, there are a lot of uh, economic activities right now. We're in the midst of um, an economic expansion. So a lot of the uh, industrial companies, the banks, the energy company had returned in, in this range um, so far this year. So this is um, uh, the, the, the return. It's based on a certain industry that the fund invested in. But um, in terms of valuation, um, it's not very expensive. It's not like at the level where we saw during before the financial crisis or, you know, the dot com bubble. Um, you, you hear a lot of people saying the market is really expensive right now. It makes sense because market has gone up and almost every week we have a new high. Um, so there are a lot of worries or um, kind of anxious that there will be a big drop, but it doesn't mean that, you know, market's gone up and it's going to drop. Um, it just means that there will be some sort of consolidation. So market may go sideways for a little while. Our expectation from now to the end of the year is um, we think most of the return has been made or, this year so far. So from now to the end of the year, the market may bounce around, but we think that the market will, or the fund, this fund at least will end the year in this range of the performance for the entire year. So it's not going to go up another 26% for the next six months, but we don't expect it to give back a lot of the gains. Does that make sense? Absolutely, thank you. Uh, this is the uh, uh, 
the holdings in the portfolio. So cash, 337,000. There are three main funds in the uh, portfolio. Uh, Dots and Cox stocks fund is the entire uh, equity allocation. There are two bonds funds in there, the Dots and Cox income fund and the PIMCO investment grade credit. Um, the, the difference between these two is the Dots and Cox has a little bit shorter in, in bond duration and the PIMCO has a bit longer. So we wanna average them out. Um, I'm going to go over the, the our market outlook, and I, I, that's going to answer hopefully a lot of the, the questions overall in the market uh, conditions. Um, this is a look back of the first six months of this year. So the S&P um, returned about 15%. International stock gave about 8.8%, and the emerging market was about 7.5%. So if you look around... Uh, Pretty much uh, the global stock markets has recovered back to the, the, the high that it set before the, um, the pandemic, uh, especially Europe. Uh, in the emerging markets, uh, it's still uh, lagging a little bit behind, but it's approaching there. Um, the, uh, the anticipation is, is with vaccine uh, rollout, um, Europe and, and the emerging market is, is a little bit slower um, in getting vaccine um, uh, rolled out. And well, right now there's not enough vaccine to go around yet, but with the increase in vaccination rate, um, we expect that, that uh, economic uh, recovery would happen faster and um, growth will return in the emerging markets and the, the global markets. Um, on the bond side, you look at you know, year-to-date, long-term treasury went down about 8%, and uh, in the medium, medium term, it's down about 1%. This is because interest rate gone up. So at the beginning of the year, uh, interest rate was a lot lower. As interest rate go, started to go up, um, bond prices started to come down. So that's the devaluation that we see here. Um, on the commodity, this is where you know the inflation concern is. You know, commodity went up 21% for the year, oil went up 50%. You know, um, and the surprising uh, component is gold actually down. Uh, a lot of investors use gold as a way to hedge uh, for inflation. It hasn't really performed the way that it should um, um, overall comparing to other commodity. So this is our investment theme for, um, for, for the third quarter and going into the second half of the year. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, we see that you know, right now the US economy is in the middle of an expansion uh, with COVID recovery um, and the economy, most of the economy reopened. Um, we are um, on a very high trajectory growth. So last quarter, GDP was growing in the 6%. We anticipate you know, GDP to go um, up another 5% uh, for the quarter. Now, um, the, the, the backdrop is the Fed has been very accommodative with their monetary policy. Um, but in the last few meetings, Fed officials have acknowledged that um, with the economic improvement, condition improvement, there is some pressure in inflation and the Fed has talked about tapering their quantitative easing. Um, that is what the market actually expected to hear um, because you don't want inflation to go rampant and, and it's good that the, the Fed acknowledged that. Um, and we'll talk more about inflation later, but um, in, in terms of just a, a note on inflation, the Fed doesn't see that inflation, it's, it's a big of a concern. They think it's transitory um, with, you know, the, the, the increase in inflation is, is, is expected because of, you know, from a shutdown, you have a lot of disruption in the supply chain. Um, you're going to have some prices increase in, in certain sector of the market. Uh, what's important to the Fed is price increase stays, you know, they increase and then they stay where they are, but, you know, they don't continue to increase. The fear on the market is the Fed won't be able to control that and price keeps increasing. Uh, but what the Fed say is, it should be short term once it's increased. They don't expect it to go down, but they don't expect it to go rampant. So, uh, and, and 
if, if that's the case, that's a good thing when prices start going up and the level out. Uh, and, and this is on the second point, you know, the stickiness of higher inflation reading. It's it's basically um, on on strong economic growth. You know, that's what you're you're expected to happen. Um, and and on the 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 overall stock market, uh, corporate earnings has been very strong uh, the first half of the year. Uh, earnings is expected to be very strong for the second half of the year and at least until um, uh, 2022, middle of 2022. So. Um, the, the, the earnings growth is, is, is growing uh, very strong. Uh, valuation is getting a bit stretched just because uh, price have reflected a lot of the, 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 the positive that, uh, that's been anticipated. So that's also why you've seen the return in the, in the stock market the way that, that, that we saw. Um, it's just because of the anticipation that, that economic expansion is going to happen from you know now to the end of, of next year. Uh, for us, um, from now to the end of the year, the source of volatility is you know continued to be on the policy front. So on on the 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 uh, uh, fiscal policy, what's going to happen with taxes may dictate the short term return of the stock market. What I say when I say short term is that longer term, it really doesn't have much effect on the return of, of, of stock market. Um, if it, you know, there's a new tax, um, if tax go up, uh, companies will figure out how to adjust for it. And, and, and in a sense, uh, some of it will be passed to, to the consumer. Some of it will be, you know, uh, company will have planned for it. And, and that's um, over the long term, it's really, doesn't have uh, much effect on earnings, corporate earnings. Um, short term, inf uh, investor would you know justify it by okay, if taxes going up, mm, there may be some pressure on on prices on 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 stock, but uh, it doesn't last. And then on the monetary side, um, if you know the the Fed start tapering and um, you know the money supply is is uh, becoming you know, that the, um, interest rates start going up, then there may be, again, short-term effect on stock, uh, stock prices. Over the long term, that's actually a good thing because the Fed only increase interest rate or they control interest rate when we're in an economic expansion and, and that will show up in corporate earnings. And long-term, that shouldn't affect the, the prices of stock um, also. So I talked a little bit about inflation um, and, and uh, earlier, this is the point, uh, inflation is expected to go up uh, and it's shown in the numbers. Um, what's important is, is it continue to go up in the same rate? If it starts going up now, you know, 5% and stay there, um, you know, and maintain the one to 2% uh, for the next year, that's a healthy sign that the Fed has said, come out and said, um, they want inflation to be higher, uh, at least for, for uh, the last few quarters. Uh, they, they let it run uh, much higher than 2% and they're comfortable with that. Um, on our view, we think that well, so far the Fed hasn't made uh, a mistake on their policy yet. And uh, we'll believe that's in their commentary that that is, is transitory um, and then until you know there's information to 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 prove otherwise, uh, we still believe that the Fed has uh, the right amount of control over inflation. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of the investor uh, have asked us about the housing market as well. So you know part of of the inflation's concern is that housing prices have gone up dramatically. Um, and there's some statistics showing that right now, you know, the mortgage debt uh, is at all time high and, and you know, prices surpassed the, 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 the trajectory of prices uh, was similar to the path of the 2006, 2007, leading up to the, the financial crisis and the housing uh, bubble. Um, the, what this chart said or what, what this slide said is, is, is different this time. Uh, last time it's, you know, the, uh, the, the increase in house, housing prices 
was more of a speculative bet market that investor, um, real estate investor were looking for bets to, to you know, houses to go up and they own uh, leverage uh, mortgage debt. So that, you know, uh, that it was an unnatural supply and demand uh, uh, kind of um, scenario where you have a lot of demand, but you have limited supply, but the demand was on speculative. So when prices stopped going up, you know, investors started losing money, they start selling and that, that caused a big crash. This time it's also based on supply and demand, but it's more on the supply side. Over the last 10 years, the US economy or, or the, the, the US overall, we didn't build enough houses to keep up with the growth in our, um, uh, in our population. So there is a limited supply of houses going on the market and that caused prices to go up. Uh, we don't have the pressure of people uh, trying to buy houses to speculate. Um, and that's the key difference. So when, and in this environment, you see a lot of builders start building out or they're trying to catch up. Once we have a healthy, you know, supply and demand um, balance, then prices would, would uh, normalize or would, would uh, uh, balance out or level out. So uh, to summarize, we don't expect a, a bust in, in the housing market. Um, if anything, house price stop going up and, and maintain at that level for, for quite some time. In terms of the global economy, like I said, you know, it's it's uh, our view is it has to do with COVID vaccine as vaccination ri rates rises. Um, we see that uh, global economy start recovering faster. Uh, I'm gonna skip the next few pages. Um, this page is where um, I talked about earlier. In terms of valuation, right now, uh, stock valuation is quite high, but it's not historically high. And if you think about, if you if you look at valuation right now, comparing to where we were six months ago, um, six months ago, the stock uh, market was about 20% lower, but valuation right now is cheaper than where they were six months ago, just because earnings back then, six months ago was a lot lower and earnings right now is showing much higher. And the anticipation is earnings will continue to grow at double digits uh, for the S&P. So it's in terms of, you know, stock prices going up is actually justify the way that um, price has gone up um, because earning has gone up and, you know, valuation seems, uh, you know, uh, uh, normal. It's on the high side, definitely comparing to historical averages, but it's not super high, like, you know, leading into the, the, the 1999 bubble or um, before, right before the financial crisis. So, it's a yellow sign to us, uh, but we don't have um, a, a huge concern that, that there's a big, big drop because of valuation ahead of us. Uh, second slide, this one is, uh, I, I talked about uh, uh, a little bit earlier as well. Um, we anticipate that the Fed will raise interest rate, um, um, begin to taper and interest rate to start going up uh, at least next year. Um, a lot of the stock investor or equity investor uh, had concern that when interest rates start going up, that's going to affect stock prices. Historically, that hasn't happened. Um, it's actually during, so we went back and looked at the last four cycles where the Fed started to increase interest rate, 1994, 99, 2004, and 2015. Um, we looked at the, the 12 months leading into the first rate hike and the 12 month after. Um, so historically on average, um, there's about nine and a half percent, a market up, is up nine and a half percent the 12 months before uh, a, a, a rate hike and then up another 9% uh, on average after the rate hike. So. And it, it kind of makes sense. The, the Fed don't actually write, rate, um, raise interest rate in a recession. They only raise interest rate where um, you know the economy is getting. Um, they, they worry that the economy is running too hot. So when you have uh, uh, an expansion that the, the economy may go too hot, well, that's a good thing because the the 
the, the economy is doing very well. That's why the Fed increased rates. So that go back into the earnings side of corporate. And that's reflect on, on the historical performance of the stock market. Um, so what our view is we, do, we don't worry about equity prices when the, the Fed raised interest rate. Again, um, the short term, the immediate effect of you know, the few weeks or months right after the initial uh, rate hike, market may bounce with the volatility, but overall the trend, uh, we think uh, longer term, uh, it's, it's going up. And that leads to our last slide. So our view on, on um, uh, asset classes. Uh, in terms of equity, we maintain a neutral view. And I just want to reiterate a neutral view, meaning if we have a 50% allocation to equity, we stay at the 50. We don't want to go too much higher. Um, uh, it's just because you know we think that there a lot of the return has been realized and there's not a lot of return going forward um, in, uh, to, to, to go um, overweight. But we maintain that, that, that allocation. Um, we have a, a underweight on fixed income and that's also the reason why the, the uh, pension portfolio has a little bit more in cash, 7% in cash. Um, that is the money um, uh, maintained for, for fixed income. If we want to go back into fixed income right now, interest rate is just so low. Once we see rates um, a little bit more attractive, that cash will be deployed back into, into fixed income. And that uh, concludes my uh, presentation. Any uh, questions? So you're expecting fixed income rates to actually go lower and then get in at that point, is that correct? Uh, the rates next to couple go months. Up. Uh, we we anticipate rates to go up. So, on the bond the, the bond prices to go down. Um, when we see bond prices uh, a little bit uh, lower than where they are now, um, we would add more to it. And that that's expected in the next quarter or within the by the end of the year. Um, so our view is so right now the 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 ten year Treasury rate is about one point two five percent. Our view is within the next two quarters, 10-year uh, treasury rate should be in the one, one and a half to two percent, anywhere in, in that range. Um, I'd be more comfortable adding back, you know, the, the cash back into fixed income when the 10 years uh, above one and a half percent. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you. Um, and I, I sent this report to to um, Heather and 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 Anne. So you know, feel free to um, if you um, need a copy. Um, yeah, and I forward it to everyone that's here already. Okay, perfect. All right, I will see you uh, again next quarter. Thank, Thank you for so much for your time. All right, so um, the Hi. next. Oh. Before we move on to the next item, and I know I should have read more carefully, um, on the minutes, can we make a minor correction and then um, um, and take a vote again on the minutes? You can do whatever you want. Okay. So on the minutes, uh, I believe it was stated that the guests pre pre present were, were Dewey, to an alternate board member Weitzel, and it was actually alternate board member Bellman. Um, board member Weitzel was already listed on the top as being present. So I'll, with that correction, I'll move to approve the minutes again. And I'll second again. Thank you. Um, so uh, board member uh, Gary? Yes. Board member Ford. He shook his head. 
or nodded his head? He's nodding, yes. So board member Weitzel. <laughs> yes. And I Can I do that throughout the rest of this? Just nod my head. <laughs> Chair Robin. Yes. Thank you. Now number six. Okay. So we reset the time for this meeting from the morning to the afternoon. And then we realize that once we start going back to in-person meetings, we are going to come up against the school board's meetings um, at, at, at City Hall. So Anne and I are asking if we can keep the day, but move it to, and what did we decide? Three? You're on mute. Yeah, three o'clock. I think we said three o'clock. Would three o'clock work for everyone? That's fine. No. Late changes. Yes. Sounds good. All right, perfect. So we will, going forward, meeting what are we the last Tuesday of the month I don't know what month it is the month following the quarter and at three o'clock okay do we have to vote on that or are we fine let's vote on it just so we can have it down in okay. written in the minutes since it's actual minutes so um I'll move <laughs> If someone want to second again. I'll second. Okay. Board member Gary. Yes. Board member Ford. <laughs> he's, he's saying yes. Um, board member Weitzel. Yes. And Chair Robin. Yes. And I, oh yes. So motion carries. Okay, so does anyone have any requests for future board, uh, future agenda items? Perfect, we still have no public. Uh, um, so the next meeting is going to be October 26th at three o'clock. And with that, we adjourn. All right, thank you everyone. As always, thank you. Heather, just in time. <laughs> you guys take care.